And not ever preach ever again. Not ever say anything ever again. Because that's what he told me. That's what Satan had on my heart for years. You can't preach. Who's going to listen to you? How many people's here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm glad she's here. She's also counted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Eighteen folks are here. Who have to hear me because you're here, right? Here's my point. If the Lord has put something inside your heart, do it. Why has he put that in your heart? You are equipped for it. And, and why are we able to, why are you able to do it? He's for us, right? If, if he be for us, then it doesn't matter who said no, right? Here's what we should do. If the Lord has put something in your heart, when somebody says no, here's what you should do, laugh and say, okay, he's somebody else I'll have to show. I'll have to show her. Why do I say that? Why do I, I say that? In Christ, we can do all things. How do I know that we can do all things? Because my Bible tells me so. Yeah. But how else do I know? If you look back, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. If you will look back over your life, there have been situations in your life folks have said, you're not going to be able to get that done. That's not going to work out. That's not going to work for you. It's not going to happen. But what did you do? You pushed forward. You had your faith and trust in God. And what happened? You got through it. But there are some of us here are hanging around and tired. And I as well, we think, well, because so-and-so said no. And I'm just saying, oh, it's probably not going to, to work out. Here's where I'm going. We're going to be, get tired. There's going to be storms. But I'm going to say something. And you hear this. The older you are, it is even now so very important that you go forth and forward and do what these things the Lord has placed inside your heart. Why? Because people like me are looking. And why do I use myself as an example? We're watching. We're looking. The more you do at the age you are, man, it's said to be on fire. If she's going to do it, I have respect for her. I've watched her. If she's going to do it, I as well. I have to get busy. Because you're older, because you may be tired, it's not time to stop. You are still here for a reason, a purpose, a call. God has placed some things upon your heart. And I'm going to read just the prescriptions because hey, this no has hit me. We can't stop with no. We can't let no stop us. If you let no stop us, where will you get? My ears were spinning last night. I had a home homework to do and I was at the house and I'm so glad I said, I really don't feel like going and getting this, but I there got this instructor that hmm, I gotta get it done. Because she won't accept no. But that's how we should be, right? No, doesn't get it. It doesn't fix it. We have to get up. And here's what I've learned. If I get just get that much done, say today and tomorrow, if I'll get that much more done, and that very next day, if I'll get that much more done than what's going to happen by Friday or by Saturday or by Sunday, I'll look back and say, I got it done. But why was I able to do it? Because I didn't accept no. In your life, there's going to be a whole lot of no's. It just is. But who has said yes, though? Why don't we listen to him? And why do we listen to all of them? Guys, I'm going to share with you. I've heard a whole lot of no. Me, I like them now. I get excited. You tell me no, and I'm going to start. Oh, here I come. Here I come. Why am I like that? Because I'm led by him. He showed me. Now, if you want to fire me up, hey, don't tell me. Yes, don't say, girl, this, you tell me no. Woo, here I come. <laughs> here we go. This is how we have to approach our life. It's here for us to get. Why is it here for us to get? He, he put it here for us. He put it here for us. I'm going to read these scriptures. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to send her a text. No, you're not only to me means yes. You've got me fired up. I'm excited. Don't let her know stop you. If the Lord has put something in your heart and on your mind and if he showed you that you can accomplish it, if it's in his will, then go do it. 
And those folks who said no will say, man, I didn't think he could do it. And then I say to him, I couldn't do it, but I know somebody who could. He fixed it, right? And then he'll say, well, I want what you have. I'll say, he's here for you as well. Here's my secret. My faith, my trust, my hope is in him. After you have waited on the Lord, he's put it in your heart and soul. Then what are you to do? You are to get up and to run, to scrape, to scrap, to do anything you can to get there. And I, I and I, I and I'll be honest. I've I've, I've I've had the man. I've seen some days. I thought I, I I'm not gonna get this done. But it says in Philippians four and thirteen, I can do all things. I can do all this through Him, who yeah who. Yeah, Gives me strength. And while I'm trying to read without these glasses, I do not know. Psalms 112 and 7. Here's how it reads. They will have no fear of bad news. Hey, their hearts are steadfast. Tr tr trusting in the Lord. All those times I was told no. They're all you. Can't preach. I'm going to share. I'm not going to read all of these. I'm going to just share a story. I knew I was so supposed to preach when I was taking yeah. this whole altar. altar. So I didn't share it for a long time because of my sister. I wasn't going to tell anybody. I, I was supposed to preach it. And I knew I was, but if I don't tell anybody, then nobody knows. Keep this secret. And then we did it. Church <coughs> down here. And, and I tell you that, a pastor and he would say that Earl came to him the day he preached. And he would say it in church sometimes. Man, that person was scared. And I said, he's telling everybody what I'm supposed to do because I knew as well. I said, he shared my secret with everybody. I'm going to share something with you guys. You don't have any secrets. You know what he's put in. He's going to find his own way to bring these things out. I heard somebody say something this week, and I just said, prayer. somebody else on my talk about it. Uh, and even after she left to talk about how important that class was at the time. And I've had that same conversation in my mind over and over. How important that class is, how it works for everybody, and how it's designed. It's the only way folks like us, they can get through it. It has to set up so folks who can't do it this day or that day. The way she has it set up, it works. Here's my point. It's not a secret. But I want to say this, I'm going to close with this. And often, the oftentimes the Lord works through you for that person. You are somebody else's opportunity. But here's what has to happen. You can't accept that and no. Now, I'm not trying to say anything I'm just, I'm just saying, here's how it is for each and every person. It's not just for you, it's for somebody else. You can't accept those no's. How many, how many kids who wouldn't have gotten reared had you have accepted them? How many things would not have gotten done had you accepted them? How, how many folks would not be where they are had you accepted them? Had you accepted them? Where would we? Where would I be if my grandma would have accepted what they said to me? He's not going to make it unless she studied. He's not that smart. He's not going to get there. She had a belt that said yes. <laughs> Her belt said, I will spank you all the way. And I love you that much. And she did. I love you. All of those no's, he said, I've got one route for you. And here's how we're going. Here's my point. The Lord has put it in her heart to stay on me, and she gave me everything I needed. Every spanking I got, I deserve. <laughs> but here's my point. My point is this. Don't accept no. Who's behind all of those no's? Who's behind it? He is. How do I know he's behind those no's? He wants what? He wants you to fail. And as we fail, then what happens to us? We quit, right? 
go over and put my nose here in the corner. I can't succeed. I can't go. I can't do anything right. I can't even speak, right? If you accept the note, that becomes what? Your reality. You can't accept me. And I got to sit down so he gets to speak. And I'm going to close with this. I'm going to text my friend back and say, no only means get started. It only means you work hard. After the Lord has showed you it's there. After he's showed you that it's in your purpose. After he has showed you you are equipped for it. Go on and accept him. I'm 57 years old. And I have seen in him that he cannot accept me. 57. I heard him say something. And I, and I had to say that. I heard him say, he said, that's not that old. And he, if I was 77, still, he's older. He said, he's older than me. If he's not accepted, you know, how can you accept me? That, there are some stories inside here, and I've heard part, a part of these stories. And I'm going to say this, and i got to sit down because I'm going. There are some of us here who feel sorry for ourselves. I've had it rough. I've had it tough. Man, I've heard some stories, and now I think, whoa, I got it good. I can't accept no. If their act two looks how it looks, how can your act two not look that way as well? But here's how it has to, here's what's going to make it look that way. By not accepting no and putting your faith and trust in the Lord and working hard and staying in. Because we have some, we have some folks here who have in the, who have worked hard and have endured some things and they have not quit. And we're happy to have all of you. All of you. Okay. All of you. But now it's time for us to not accept no the ones who aren't as old. And even those who are here who are the age they are, I'm so happy that you guys have not accepted. So let's stay at it and let's share this week with folks as they think they can't, they will not get there as they speak on how hard it is. Just share your story. You didn't accept no. You stayed at it. You stayed with it. Okay, practice. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, okay. I assume that what God told me to talk about today is for the younger generation. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why I was told to talk about it. But it don't work if I say no. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of Calvinism? Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. In its purest form, Calvinism teaches that you have no control over your salvation. If God had intended for you to be saved, you will be and you cannot prevent it. And if he didn't intend for you to be saved, then there's no chance for you, no matter If in the future when the current leadership is not here anyone tries to come in to teach Calvinism they will not give you the whole story at once. They'll try to give you a little piece at a time and over time get you over in that area. You know about the blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. The blood that cleanses our sin. But there are churches who teach you don't have to believe in the blood. They say that we are a bloody religion. Mm -hmm. 
there are people that teach that it's not necessary to believe that Jesus actually died on that cross. But anyway, but God told me to pass on to the church to always be careful and when or if false religion starts creeping into your church, put a stop to it. Amen. Since Daryl and I, neither one teach things that we don't find in the scripture. I currently don't feel like you have a problem. Unless one of us makes a mistake, in which case you should call it to our attention. But for some reason, God told me to tell you to watch for false religions. Mm -hmm. To watch out for those that say Jesus Christ was not born of a virgin. Mm -hmm. We know that that's not something that happens every day. We know that's not normal. that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. Mm -hmm. Mary's pregnancy was caused by the Holy Spirit himself. Therefore, Jesus Christ is God <coughs> and the Son of God. Or God the Son. There are people that cannot understand the Trinity, so they say there is no such thing. I don't fully understand, but the Bible says it, so I believe it. Amen. The Trinity is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost, whichever you prefer to call it. Mm -hmm. The King James Version, of course, uses Holy Ghost, and other versions say Holy Spirit, and so far as I'm concerned, since the word translated as the Ghost in the uh, King James and Spirit in the other translations can also be translated wind, uh, depending on the context. I don't get up struck, don't get all bent out of shape if you say Holy Spirit instead of Holy Ghost. Um, we must believe that the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost, whichever you want to call it, is part of the Godhead. There is one God revealed in three persons. Amen. There is so many of these things that false teachings that can creep in. We teach that you should uh, do works, good works for God by helping other people or by whatever the God has called you to do. But that teaching must be tempered with the fact that you cannot work enough to earn your salvation.
if Daryl had begun preaching when he was five years old and, and never quit, they still wouldn't earn a yeah. salvation. No matter what work you do for the Lord, it's simply to show other people what a Christian is supposed to be and to show them the right way. If you could earn your salvation, then there would be some specific thing that you had to do. The only specific thing you have to do is accept what Jesus Christ has already done. Mm -hmm. We teach that you should be baptized after salvation. But baptism, if you teach that that is your salvation, then you're back to work. Mm -hmm. yeah. And works cannot earn our salvation. Yes, there's many good works that we need to be doing. My back is so sore today from trying to do a good work yesterday <laughs> <laughs> that I didn't bother to go up and say. Mm -hmm. A friend house was getting out of the back with a tornado. Mm -hmm. They boarded up six of his windows. He did still have electricity in the house and he's still living there. But he's got pasture land and a lot of his fence had tree limbs on it. So I walked along with others for quite a ways, moving tree limbs and farm equipment off the fence, mm -hmm. putting the fence back up. I didn't do it for money, and no money was offered. And no matter how many days I did this, it wouldn't earn my salvation. If someone teaches that there's something that you have to do to earn your salvation, then they're in legalism and and they need to be corrected. Mm -hmm. Yes, I dearly believe that there are good works we need to be doing. I'm trying to think of something else that, of course, you know, in Jesus' time, when he walked on this earth, the religious leaders rejected him as being God. Mm -hmm. They got terribly upset when he said, your sins are forgiven. Mm -hmm. Because they knew only God has that prerogative to forgive your sins. The religious leaders in Jesus' time had begun to teach 
to the farms of legalism. That there's so many things that you had to do. Yes, God had asked for all these sacrifices, but God asked for those sacrifices to be done in a loving manner. To be done to worship God, those those sacrifices, when they were done just purely out of memory without giving any thought of the meaning of the sacrifice, God said it's done. And he, he told the people that he would have rather have mercy than all the sacrifices they could do. That means we need to have a little concern for other people. I don't foresee any time that false teachings will be in this church, but for some reason God told me to warn you to watch for it. Maybe if you move to a different area, you, you need to be very careful of it. Maybe Times are fixing to change, and I don't know. But any teaching that does not line up with the scriptures, run away, correct it, do do what you have to do, but don't continue to set under false teachings and don't begin to believe false teachings. What is our invitation? 294. Mm -hmm. That's not unavoidable. If we let God have his own way in everything, we'd be a lot better off.